Junior doctors and consultants went on their first ever joint strike this week. And there is little sign of the government and unions reaching an agreement. It's been at least 100 days since Health Secretary Steve Barclay last met with union leaders. The Tories still think they're on the right side of the argument, though. On BBC Question Time, this was Government Minister Kevin Hollenrake. Our doctors should be looking after patients, not stood on picket lines. The, uh, there has been 900,000 cancelled appointments across the NHS, and it is absolutely unacceptable. What the government has done, it said it will stand by the independent payer body recommendations. For junior doctors, that's an 8.8% increase. That's the average salary for a junior doctor is £55,000. For a consultant, the average is £130,000. Um, we absolutely need these doctors back in the health service. It's, I think it's unacceptable that uh, they can put people's uh, safety, people's lives at risk in terms of not being in the hospitals that where they're paid to be. So how are you going to do it? That's the, the thing, because well, they've been we, on, they keep going on strike and the BMA is saying it might go on strike indefinitely. Okay. How, how are you going to resolve this? We've already legislated. There's something called the minimum service level bill, which is opposed by Labour, which requires um, where we specify it. It requires certain parts of the economy, such as our train drivers, such as our healthcare workers, and we're consulting on that now, to put in place a minimum number of people to look after the patients in those hospitals. <laughs> Of course, it's a bit rich hearing the Tories talking about a minimum service in the NHS. They've run down the NHS for 13 years. You have to wait 12 hours if you go to A&E in the winter. That's got nothing to do with strikes. That's got to do with mismanagement, right? I don't need to make these points for you because there was a nurse in the audience. Um, she was very articulate and she wasn't impressed. I'm a nurse. Um, oh, I voted, well, let's hear what you think about it. I voted strike in the last ballot. When I'm balloted again, I will vote strike again, and I'll do that continually until pay talks open and they're realistic. We are striking for pay. We are striking because we feel undervalued, but we're also striking for patient safety. So when we're accused of putting patients at risk, I say patients are at risk every single day of the week. We've got 7 million people on waiting lists. We've got 140,000 vacancies. People are dying on waiting lists. People are dying in the back of ambulances. And this cannot go on. The government need to get real and address the situation. And are you convinced by what you're hearing from, from either party here? As for the minimum minimal service levels bill, what I say to that is unions on strike days, they put in minimal service levels already. This is nothing new. And I would say we welcome the government saying we want minimal staffing, but we want minimal staffing every single day of the week. I've worked in the NHS for almost 20 years. I did shifts nearly 15 years ago that were 27 hours long because there was no nurses to take over because we were so short staffed. Now that was nearly 15 years ago. And here we are now with the government talking about minimal service levels. Mm. Frankly, that is an insult to us okay. all. Okay, let, let, no, let's hear it. Aaron, these strikes don't seem to be going anywhere. I mean, it was interesting, actually, that comment was from, from a nurse. They, they ended up sort of a, a, agreeing to the pay rise which was offered to them, not before sort of dividing the workforce. I don't think that was a good news story in any shape or form. That seemed to me the Tories trying to you know, destroy the, <laughs> the morale of nurses in this country, which seems like a pretty silly thing to do. Um, but when it comes to the doctors, um, this dispute doesn't seem to be ending anytime soon. Um, where do you see it going? Yeah, it's hugely interesting, isn't it, with regards to, for instance, the rail strikes, um, um, and, and I think there will be just more NHS strikes generally, uh, whether that's consultants or junior doctors or nurses. Like you say, the nurses were intended for now. Uh, but when you've had a 20% fall in your pay in real terms between 20, 2010 and 2023, um, you know, I think people are going to keep on coming back for that. They, they don't, nurses do not want to get permanently poorer. You know, they've got £56,000 worth of debt, newly graduating nurses. So they have a lot to be angry about. Um, and what's really interesting, Michael, with regards to, for instance, the rail strikes, is I think... I think the government has basically subsidised um, these private rail opera operators to the, the sum of around £1.5 billion. Um, and I think with regards to junior doctors, I think it's about, um, it's cost, they think it's cost about a billion. So you're looking at a situation really with regards to rail strikes, with regards to junior doctor strikes, they've spent the money that would have paid for the pay rises to stop the pay rises, right? And that tells you something deeper is going on here which is that no matter the cost, this is not about saving money. This is not about saving money because they're spending the money. No matter the cost, they can't show that industrial action works, that striking works at scale. And I think this is right. Mick Lynch has said this. If there wasn't that intervention and that help from government, particularly, for instance, for the private rail operators, they would have given up by now. 
they would not have been able to withstand the industrial action they faced from their workers over the last 12 months. They're still there because the government's helping them. Like I said, because strikes cannot be shown, demonstrated to work, to get people what they want. And then that leads you to a, a final question, Michael, which is, well, look, the government says that we have privately operated rail in this country. We have privately operated rail. Okay. Firstly, we can have publicly owned operators from abroad providing services here, but we can't have an operator owned by us, the British public. Secondly, they're privately operated, but they get subsidies from government while paying dividends to shareholders. What private company works like that? And thirdly, when their workers want better pay, the government steps in to, to stem the losses and to, 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 to basically make sure they don't give in to demands of, of striking workers. These aren't private companies, you know, privatization. They're not private companies. We're in a very weird zombie gray zone of private and public when it comes to things like water, energy, rail. You saw it with, with water recently. You know, the Tories are saying, well, to build more houses, we'll have to allow the house builders to put more shit into rivers. OK, well, to do that, it means we'll have to stop farmers and water companies doing it. So we'll give them more money to not do it. And I think the part of that plan, um, which Labour didn't sign off on, it cost £700 million. Pounds. Everybody went crazy. Oh, Labour, I want to build houses. That would have meant the taxpayer giving private water companies £400 million pounds to not put shit in the water. These same private water companies pay off dividends. Their bosses earn massive amounts of money. They don't do their job. Bills are up constantly. They've increased, I think, 50% more than inflation since privatization in the early 1990s. But the government is still giving them hundreds of millions of pounds in taxpayer money to not put shit in rivers. So again, private companies. What private company operates like that? Again, it's about failure of the media, Michael. The media has not held this bizarre system we have of failed privatization. They've not scrutinized it properly, and they've not held it accountable. You know, you do not ever hear this, that these rail strikes would have worked if the government was, wasn't using taxpayer money to prop up privately owned rail companies. Those are the facts. Um, and, and, and they're doing it, like I say, for political reasons, not to save money, not to help the taxpayer. I'll leave you with this. Apparently, we have, we have the most expensive rail uh, tickets in Europe. We have the most expensive rail tickets. If you want to go somewhere on the train, it costs more in Britain than anywhere else in Europe. But apparently, we can't afford to have ticket offices. So we have the most expensive tickets, but we can't afford to have ticket offices. There's a scam going on, people. 